for me, in terms of a station rotation, I'm really just trying to troubleshoot problems, but also make sure they're following the sequence so that they don't jump ahead and then feel confused or lost. And you guys read through the directions of specifically what I'm asking you to look for as you're annotating, yes? When they're in a smaller group and they're doing kind of the practice, I can reach over and say, well, what about this? Or, hey, did you guys talk about that? Or, and then we can model. You saw me come back together with my group and just talk with them. Okay, what did you put? And so then they're kind of forced to engage there. And if there are misconceptions, I can kind of correct them. I can just go into so much more depth with a small group and really quickly identify like who's struggling, who needs help, who needs extra support, and I can be the person to support them. You guys over here are gonna be working on a close read of another speech, so you're gonna need your study sync print companions and all the directions are here. So we're gonna have 20 minutes. So the first read station. I feel like when you put a first read in a station, it's, there's clearly a task associated with that reading, right? So they're reading it, they have to think about the text, and then they have to apply what they've, kind of what they've learned from reading it in the think questions, and again, like reach back and grab that textual evidence. So it feels really different from just opening a book and reading it silently to yourself or reading it as a class even. Because again, if we're reading, let's say we read that story or that piece out loud, again, kids are, if we're reading it together and I'm expecting them to jump in, then there's anxiety about reading in front of people. We're all moving at the same pace. So again, they don't get to kind of self-pace as they're reading. I think all of those are benefits of having it in a station. When I'm teaching students how to annotate, for example, at the beginning of the year, because most of my ninth graders have never annotated before, it's easier for them to do initially on paper, to do those pen and paper annotations. I would say when the kids are working on a first read, my role is pretty minimal. I'm going around, I want to make sure that they're, they are annotating, that they're not just highlighting everything, which is something that many of them do. They, I highlight a ton and then they're not writing and processing what they're reading. So I'll go around and make sure they're annotating, they're using a variety of annotation strategies. I love that I am not tethered to a book room anymore. I can grab speeches, I can grab excerpts, I can grab short stories. I love having access to what feels like unlimited text for students because it's, it's so much nicer to be able to complement, even if we're reading stories in addition to a novel that we're working on as a class, I can make parallels and comparisons. But for me, the biggest benefit is just that I'm not tied to a book room. I can choose whatever I want, whatever makes sense for the kids at the reading level or the theme that we're focusing on or the topic we're working with. Over in this group, you guys are continuing with the um, rhetorical device. So you guys will each grab a device, you'll look it up, define it in words that make sense for you, and then you're gonna sit, literally put a chair here, present your definitions and your examples for the group. You know, when you tell kids something, they're gonna retain a little bit of it if they're paying attention. If they have to own that experience of looking up a word, coming up with an example, presenting it to their peers, they're gonna like master what that term means. They're gonna remember what that, like in the station with the rhetorical devices, they're gonna remember what their rhetorical device means because they've taught it. I feel like that's when you really get kids mastering concepts is when they own an idea, they research it, they present it to their peers. It's so much more meaningful. So in station four with my academic group, I made that a teacher-led station. And typically, I always have a teacher-led station in a station rotation model, just because that's my one opportunity to actually work in small groups or one-on-one -on -one with kids. I started out by having them create some notes and put the word vignette on it. And then we talked about what is a vignette. So, you know, it's a snapshot. It's, it, you know, and I basically went through, this is what it is, this is what it isn't, so that they could get a better sense for how is what is the structure of this book? How is Sandra Cisneros approaching each of these little sections? Because they were really struggling with the way this book is written because it's not a story. It doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end. So we went through what a vignette is, and then I had a, um, a series of questions and asked them with pairs to read one of the vignettes from House on Mango Street that we had already read as a class or in class, and to think about, okay, what is the element being focused on? What is the language, the type of language she uses? Sometimes I use our teacher-led station or my teacher-led station because they've done something and just totally missed the mark and we need to go back through it completely. 
or I'll use it as a workshop space where they're working and then I'm really focused not on introducing information, but on sitting next to them and looking at what they're doing, asking them questions, checking in, giving them real-time feedback. 